we'll be discussing an interesting case of a term baby who was born with a weight of 3.3 uh, kilograms normal delivery born to a primary mother the antenatal period was uncomplicated the serology was negative rubella immune and her vaginal swab was positive for gbs she received one dose of ampicillin during labor abgar scores were normal the baby was exclusively breastfed in the initial few months there was neonatal jaundice which is physiologic and no treatment was required the total bilirubin was uh, 142 on day 3 and direct bilirubin was normal the baby was reviewed at 7 days and at 2 months for the vaccination visit the mum had noted a papular rash in the stage and it was discussed initially as infantile acne and the rash was happening in the uh, forehead and face the baby was growing well after the 2 month vaccination visit the baby presented with a generalized papular rash which affected the trunk limbs neck and the face there was no significant erythema of this area the baby did not have discomfort or itching there were no systemic abnormalities in the baby baby was very well feeding well thriving a dermatology opinion was sought because it was a generalized rash and it was atypical this was at 3 months of age so you can see shiny papules and it was more generalized appearance of the baby and it was present on the trunk as well the dermatologist mentioned whether it is uh, granuloma annular lichen nitidus as well and because of the atypical picture and the age he performed a punch biopsy from the right forearm which was sent for histology study the baby was started on an emollient and a mild topical steroid and the differential diagnosis of histiocytosis was discussed by myself with the pathologist and they did specific staining uh, as we will discuss for the histiocytosis so there were dermal histiocytes with giant cells seen and uh, we have a specific staining which was positive as well so cd1a positivity with abundant epidermotropism of the cd1a type cells and s100 uh, brown staining that you can see here was positive as well so these two findings the cd1a and the s100 positivity are consistent with langerhans cells and so it's a cutaneous langerhans cell histiocytosis as a diagnosis and the baby did not have any other system involved so it's an isolated cutaneous form so the dermal histiocytic infiltrate was positive cd1a and s100 consistent with cutaneous langerhans cell histiocytosis so baby had liver function renal function blood count chest and skull x ray ultrasound abdomen all of which were normal so this diagnosis was discussed in detail with the parents the pattern of the rash and lack of evidence of systemic involvement fits with congenital self healing langerhans cell which is a benign type so uh, this was a big point that favored congenital that the baby did not have any systemic features we reassured the parents that it is likely to resolve with time over a few months of course we stressed the importance of follow up and this was arranged the baby was last seen at 9 months and recently i've heard from the family even after 4 years of age the child is thriving growth and development are normal and the rash did not come back after that uh, the baby had a con suspected milk intolerance after that but that was not related to this concern so uh, histiocytosis is accumulation and infiltration of histiocytes like monocytes macrophages and dendritic cells langerhans cells are also called dendritic cells these are antigen presenting cells they are linked to hla system antigen presenting uh, to the major histocompatible antigens linked to the major histocompatibility complex which is the hla system and they present them to t cells b cells in the lymph nodes and spleen which are related to your immune memory and development uh, so the antigen sensitization happens after they are presented to these cells so it then leads to stimulating cytokine production from the lymphocytes including tnf alpha and the interleukins so the who classification of the histiocytosis class 1 is langerhans cell histiocytosis class 2 is histiocytosis of mononuclear phagocytes other than langerhans cells and familial and reactive hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis there is a video on lympho hlh in the channel uh, by a pediatric hematologist you can review the same sinus histiocytosis and uh, reticulohistiocytoma and type 3 malignant histiocytic disorders 
monocytic leukemia, malignant histiocytosis and true histiocytic lymphoma. So the histiocyte society classification classifies it as dendritic cell related which includes Langerhans cell and xanthogranuloma, macrophage related like uh, HLH and genetic or sporadic HSML which are also in the WHO classification and malignant disorders as we discussed as well. So Langerhans cell histiocytosis mainly affects age group 0 to 15 years, there is a slight male predilection and there is a type congenital self-healing cutaneous Langerhans cell histiocytosis. If you see generalized papular rash, shiny plaques as in our baby, you can consider that. Uh, you can have single cell system LCH which can be cutaneous or skeletal and we have multiple system skin, skeleton, brain, lungs and bone marrow. So you, this is the systemic involvement uh, which we will be worried about. So cutaneous involvement is seen in 50%, uh, papular or papillonodular lesions affecting the trunk, peripheral and flexural part of the limbs and scaly scalp rash can be seen as well. Skeletal involvement is seen in 70% and affects single or multiple sites including the skull uh, and the long bone. So this is a, a typical skull lesions, the punched out lesions we see in histiocytosis from skeletal involvement and lymph node enlargement is seen in 30%. Pituitary involvement or hypothalamic involvement can lead to diabetes, insipidus and hypopituitarism and bone marrow involvement can present as thrombocytopenia and pancytopenia. We can have pulmonary involvement, baby can present with respiratory distress, GA involvement with diarrhea like presentation or malabsorption, liver involvement, uh, liver dysfunction, prolonged jaundice and so on. Uh, central nervous system involvement and otitis media is typically associated. So we have a sebaceous uh, pattern on the scalp, scaly rash on the scalp with recurrent otitis media, you think of LCH as well. So this is the punched out skull lesions, uh, fortunately our case did not have any of these. The congenital self-healing type, the rash presents at birth or in the first few weeks. It can present as solitary nodules or generalized maculopapular or nodular rash. It resolves spontaneously with no fresh lesions, usually after six months of age. This was a typical pattern we saw in our case as well. And the diagnosis is confirmed by skin biopsy with staining for CD1A and S100 yes, stains. We might need further workup to rule out systemic involvement and also regular follow-up to make sure that the systemic involvement doesn't come up later. In case of solitary system involvement, we need to treat symptomatically if needed. If the other systems are involved, we classify as low risk or high risk and the at-risk organ systems which would put it as a high risk include the liver, lung, spleen and the hematopoietic system. And if multiple at-risk systems are involved, involve the hemato-oncologist, in which case we may use chemotherapeutic drugs or immune modifying agents and close monitoring and follow up. The location of the lesion and the extent of the disease affects the course and prognosis. A single system or uh, if there is no at-risk organ involvement, the prognosis is good. If there are at-risk organs involved, we need a uh, close monitoring and therapy. And uh, the degree of organ involvement as well as rapidity of response to chemotherapy correlate with the prognosis. So we discussed already that if you see a papular nodular rash in a generalized pattern, if it is associated with any other concerns like otitis media or uh, hepatomegaly, for example, think of LCH. If it's isolated, it's good for us that it's an isolated type. You may need a referral to a dermatologist and a skin biopsy with the specific stains. You need to inform your concern to the dermatologist, the pathologist, so that they use the appropriate stains. And consider the diagnosis in young children with skeletal cutaneous lesions or unexplained full blood count or LFT abnormalities. And we need to refer to a hemato-oncologist you have the facility for electron microscopy, of course, you will see the beer big granules or the tennis racket head appearance, which uh, because we went for immunohistochemistry staining, we didn't do the electron microscopy. So I hope you found this case interesting and uh, do share your thoughts in the comment. Do you have any cases like this as well? Thank you.